Good evening and it's not welcome to BFA's On The Ball Show. You're live in the studio with myself, Emil Ghazi, and uh, we've been away for a few weeks. Good to be back, loads to talk about, lots been going on as ever. But today, this show is dedicated to our guests who have traveled down the motorway uh, from Cardiff and Swansea. So let's talk to these guys and find out what's been going on uh, on the Welsh side of the border and uh, other things BFA we will be talking about the CFL league the winners and the losers and today we had a, a small matter of a cup final going on at Mile End Stadium with the under 14s Tower Hamlets Youth League and we also have the CFL Winter uh, Vets League cup final as well so I will mention them I'll show you some pictures as well later on but let's get cracking with the show and uh, I'll start with the guys on my left uh, I'm going to introduce he's been on sh before I think when they were on last time the secretary the man in the know, uh, the man who does all the uh, work in the background, gets on with it quietly. Tamjid, Salaam. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? You good? Yeah, I'm good. You? Yeah, good. Thank you. We have um, the, s the chairman, um, Mr. Anna Mia. Salaam. Also another familiar face. You've been mm. on the show before. Salaam. Wa alaikum salam. Good to have you on the show again. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, we will talk more to him. <coughs> this is someone I'm looking forward to talking to. Uh, the I think is related to Mo Farah apparently, but there'll <laughs> be more, more to learn about that coming on. We've got Akmal who uh, plays for the FC Dragons and um, he's a bit of an international trialist and we'll learn more as to what happened there. Akmal, welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu And to my right, we've got the vice chairman, again, has been on the show again, can't get enough, he's back for more. <laughs> uh, Brother Ali Akbar, how are you? Assalamu alaikum. Good, Good to you, sir. Here. Thanks for being here today. And special guest all the way from the Welsh FA. I've been told not to say <laughs> the FA. Going to get him in trouble. Uh, we've got Mizan Rahman. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Mizan. You okay? Thank you. No worries. Thanks for coming on the show. Right. I tell you what. Let's get cracking. I'll put this down. Uh, I want to know about you guys. F uh, Bengal Dragons. You've had a trip down to Bangladesh, and um, I guess that's the best place to start. The last time you were on the show, you were talking about that. The plans were going ahead for it. Uh, uh, and I'm going to come to you. Um, how did it go? Alhamdulillah, yes. The last time we were here, we, uh, we discussed the, uh, the plans for our tour, uh, forthcoming tour to Bangladesh. So on the 21st of February um, last, we um, embarked on our journey for a 12-day trip to Bangladesh. And uh, mashallah, we had a very successful tour. Um, we played five games within the space of 10 days believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> wow. it was um, it was very hectic um, but uh, mashallah I'm pleased to say we all came through unscathed mm -hmm. and um, I'm I was the most relieved man on tour being able to take all these youngsters out there and uh, bring them back and hand them over to their parents in one piece <laughs> which, was <laughs> which was my 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 biggest worry that uh, something unforeseen might happen but mashallah with the by the grace of Allah we we uh, we um we came through unscathed and um, more importantly the boys absolutely loved it they enjoyed uh, the trip so much and although the conditions were very tough mm -hmm. um, the heat uh, was uh, somewhat uh, overpowering uh, but even then they they uh, they they you know battled through it and uh, some of the pitches were absolutely rock hard mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but even then um, and to to play uh, sort of five games. Uh, within the space of 10 days was uh, very challenging for any team. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, they did us and the, the whole of the UK proud, I felt, uh, and the way they conducted themselves and also the, um, the, the level of football they, they, uh, they were able to play. Uh, and um, you know, the public, um, in the local publics were out in uh, their huge numbers to support them and to see them play as well. So uh, in a nutshell, we had a, the boys had a wonderful time, and uh, I think the, the, the local public, uh, wherever, I mean, both in Dhaka and in Silet, mm -hmm. um, took, took them to their hearts as well. And everywhere we went, we were very well received, uh, very welcoming. Everybody um, went out of their way to help us and to, um, you know, to make the, make the boys feel welcome along the way. I'm sure the, the boys will, 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 will no doubt uh, give you the, some of their own accounts of, of the tour. But in, in generally, my, I was most pleased that uh, you know, we came back uh, with a positive frame of mind mm -hmm. and uh, the boys looking forward to the, to the next one. So good stuff, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, Tamji, I'll come to you. <coughs> Obviously, you're, 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 you're kind of the, m the engine behind um, <coughs> Bengal Dragons and with logistically, this could have been a nightmare. Um, how difficult has it been or had it or was it before leading up to the tour? 
and you obviously you, re you look as you look relieved that it's over <laughs> but tell us about uh, what went on in the background well you can't really understand how relieved i was when we actually got back just to know that everything how everything went it was all so smooth nothing no major problems and i'm sure it was difficult but we had the right intentions and i think we had a lot of support from so many people i mean you you helped us as well in just having us here and you introduced us to certain parties that helped us get along with um mm. with our pro uh, with our program and everything just went really smoothly we had so many we had two really great games in Dakar and then three really good great games in Sillet as well so everything went as well as we, we could have possibly hoped okay uh Akmal coming to you as a player obviously your first trip to Bangladesh yeah. Um, the motherland and how was the experience for you and was it a positive experience? Yeah, definitely I'd say it was a, it was a positive experience. I hadn't been back home, with, I think it was about going up to 15 years. So I went up with a friend of mine who went uh, to try for the under-19 squad. Mm -hmm. um, it was, the experience was un unbelievable. Um, just looking at the way they play, um, they're more like tactically, um, yeah, they're not that advanced as us. But when it comes to us, we're like physically better mm -hmm. and technically better also. Um, so that was an eye opener, mm -hmm. um, and definitely um, they were technically physically better, or were you? No, guys? We, we were technically were. better, okay. um, but they were uh, physically better, and obviously because they're they're um, be used to their conditions, mm. they could run a lot. Um, so yeah, it was definitely an uh, eye opener. Okay. Uh, Akbar Bai, obviously from your perspective as a vice chairman uh, for the organization in terms of the uh, the arrangements and, and going back, is I'm assuming this is the first time you've been back to Bangladesh to play, to be involved in a football tour. Well, unfortunately, I could not go. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> Good I thing I did my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could not go, go because on. on that day, actually, the day they travel, uh, my nieces, uh, Walima, was on that day. Ah, okay. So I was more, um, because of that, I could not... Uh, go and I was really uh, well heartbroken actually <laughs> because oh well. but uh, mentally I was with uh, the with the boys mm -hmm. and with our uh, and I was on the phone up virtually almost every day okay and, and uh, so you were there in spirit I was there in spirit definitely also okay. like to thank actually from as uh, Tamji said from your side mm. the contacts what you gave oh, you're and the uh, and there's a Kabir Bhai actually yeah. uh, he, he did mm -hmm. guide us also and also all the uh, our community in Cardiff, mm. uh, there was a lot of sponsors, uh, you know, can't na name and all, but uh, I'm sure the sponsors who knows mm. who they are and our, you know, uh, you know, our best wishes and, and our graduate thanks to all our uh, local community and, uh, and the sponsors. Okay. <coughs> and uh, as the boys said, actually, uh, uh, I think some of them did um go first time even though it's our m motherland but mm. some of them was the first time up there yeah but i was keeping all the mothers even though he said he was keeping the boys happy mm -hmm. in bangladesh and i was keeping all the mothers the parents happy in in cardiff actually especially in in, in wales because <laughs> all the parents was contacting me <laughs> <laughs> nearly every day how the boys was doing okay and so um yes they were all the feedback is the boys had a good time there and we're all proud of it. Even the parents were all proud of them when they well come that's back. That's good. Well, you know what? Just from what you've just said, then what uh, Anna Bai said, I think the fact it really does emphasise how important um, or it shows that the fact that you guys are a family club, you're getting in touch with you know, at this age. You still, <laughs> but we often managers and organisations lose touch with the fact that it is a, a kids. These you young kids have parents, and when you get to 19, 20, no one really cares about what the parents are. But to keep them updated that's and everything, right. that's that's good stuff. All right. So well done. We'll talk more about the tour. Uh, in a bit, but let's. We've got uh, Mizan Rahman here from the Welsh FA, and uh, first of all, thanks for coming on the show because I think from our perspective, we know we know a lot about the FA, the, f the English FA. Mm. Uh, we've only recently, obviously, met you guys, and we've become uh, partners, and we're working together, and hopefully, we'll look for working more in the future. <coughs> uh, but hopefully, we'll, I'm I'm curious to learn more about what you do, and and more importantly, a Bangladeshi, uh, a young Bangladeshi working for the Welsh FA. It's it's, it's rare that you have. Um, you know, people from the BME community yeah. at, uh, who are working in, in, in organisations such as the FA, whether it be FA or Welsh FA. Uh, but tell us a bit about what you do and what your role with the Welsh FA is. So my current uh, role is uh, I'm a partnership manager. So mm -hmm. I cover the South Wales region. We are split up into six regions, uh, just like the uh, just like in England, they're split up in regions. So um, 
but before that, for seven years, I was a BME football development officer. For the audience who don't know what that is, it's black minority ethnic football development. Uh, so my role was to cover Swansea, Cardiff and Newport, which is the three main areas um, with high BME population. Mm -hmm. So my role was to get out there, um, develop football in that community, support as much as I can, apply for funding um, in, any, in any aspect. There was no, when I first started, there was nothing to work from. So myself and working with other community organisations, I've actually built the strategy ourselves. So over seven years, we were very successful. We've had, um, you know, obviously the Bengal Dragons have started themselves uh, from scratch with only a little bit of support from my end. But before that, there have been other projects that have we have the Welsh FA have supported. Um, and it, it goes from anything from funding to covering coach education costs because we know that's one of the biggest barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, working with various organisations and charities, you know, in com to improve community cohesion as well. Um, and there have been numerous successes with multicultural league. We've done the uh, refugee football league as well. Okay. So that was the first in UK, uh, which was set up, which I ran for a couple of years, and a couple of teams have actually played the Bengal Dragons in the Cohesion Cup. Um, but yeah, but uh, uh, currently now, obviously, I've, uh, I've had a recent, we've had a recent restructure, and I'm a partnership manager, but I oversee the BME football development. And obviously, coming from a Bangladeshi background, mm. I'm obviously going to be more in connected with my community friends brothers mm. families and plus you know where i'm from in swansea which is a high bme area we're all kind of close so everyone knows each other mm -hmm. jalal who approached me for support and i've said more than happy uh, to support in any way i can and what which is i think the next step is going to be getting the dragons into the league a, a mainstream league uh, which i've always believed is the way forward, way forward if you want to get any sort of recognition it's a fantastic fantastic opportunity for the players to go to Bangladesh and play it's a fantastic project program whatever you want to call it but and, and, and I'm sure the players have gained so much experience you know some of them probably haven't played mainstream before but if you get them playing mainstream football and they can withstand all that pressure the gameplay everything conditions or uh, the pitch uh, facility etc you know like condition and weather wise and mm -hmm. so forth if they can withstand that and continue playing then there's an opportunity to excel more players into the mainstream level if you like an elite level okay uh, so so i'm here to support as much as i can really and uh, yeah. what's your background in terms of your own footballing career yeah, yeah. tell so us a bit about so your path uh, when i was uh, younger um uh, i was playing for school and county uh i was in the swansea swansea city weren't in the premier league then swansea city uh youth academy that were for three months uh but i was working for my dad so it was hard to sort of give that full-time commitment to mm -hmm. Um, the football yeah. and do a full-time job as well so eventually the uh, my uh, lack of commitment started to show with football so I had to withdraw back so I ended up playing for Khnechli, uh, Khnechli Youth mm -hmm. which is uh, Do you want a tissue? Sorry? Do you want a tissue? I was hoping I was hoping I was hoping, <laughs> to, get the, I was hoping to get the violin out I was hoping to get the violin out yeah. yeah so uh, it started with Khnechli Youth um, mm -hmm. and then that was it then I didn't really excel much due to knee injuries and stuff and that was it but I've, uh, I'm in more into the coaching side of things now okay so so in terms of the Welsh FA yeah what was your path into that because for those that are watching there's many yeah. people if away I from football there are these yeah. shows there are other opportunities yeah but you know there's I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of people in Wales and uh, watching the show uh, you'd be surprised if I'm honest I think it's it's a lot of luck uh, because there's two jobs I applied for it was just this and uh, I know it's funny, Aldi, uh, sorry, uh, home bargains manager's role. And I put all my effort in the manager's role because I thought I would never get a job with the FA. Mm, yeah, which is fair enough, of course, yeah. You know, um, and I applied for it. I went to the interview and I was honest as possible. We had to do a presentation on the barriers to football with ethnic minorities, uh, 10 minutes presentation. Um, and then there's two levels of interview. Got past the first one, got called in for the second interview and there was Q and A's. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there was a lot of question fired at me. Some of them I weren't really, I weren't really aware of what they meant and so forth. So I, I think it's my honesty, my footballing background, mm -hmm. and the way I put myself forward, um, and me being a people's person. I was having a little joke and laugh with the, with, with the chief exec, which I didn't know was a chief exec at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of became a bit of a comic. But uh, I think because of my pers personal appearance and, and all aspect, I think I got. I got the role. That's all right. Yeah, uh, I have no degree or anything. So. Leading question from, from what you just said. Yeah. We talk about, we've had a number of conversations, in-depth conversa conversations about the lack of BME yeah. footballers, the lack of Asian footballers, yeah. the lack of Bangladeshi footballers yeah. within the English structure. 
talking to these boys here, yeah. the health structure seems quite welcoming, quite open. Yeah. So what are the barriers for the BME? Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's just say the Asian community, in mm -hmm. your opinion, that you've seen over there in Wales. The barriers are obvious. They're, they're, they're the same. They're the same across the border. Um, it is more welcoming. I think we've got a specific BME program which kick-started everything. So when the Welsh FA employed me, they actually started a BME football program. There wasn't anything. So we have a disability football program. We have a women's and girls, um, um, obviously the boys and the men's and seniors, and they decided to set that up as well and hopefully to achieve the seven star award from UEFA. Mm -hmm. So that helped a lot. And uh, that's why it might seem welcoming, but I think the barriers are the same. I think main main barriers which I think some of us will agree on is parental support. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the main thing. If we're not taking our kids, you know, to the after school activities or the local football clubs and they are very passionate about football, then there's how do you expect them mm -hmm. to excel? You don't want them to be independent when they're 16, 17, yeah. all right? And then think, right, I can catch a bus by myself, I'll go training, I cycle down, and my mum is a bit more lenient for me to go out. And then they start going training and so forth. You don't want them to start at that age because the peak age, I believe, is they should be spotted by them. So if they're really good and they're playing really good in school, they should be supported, taken to clubs by their parents. It's not long, it doesn't take, mm -hmm. there's so many clubs around your local areas you know, that commitment from training to uh, once a week or twice a week and then take them to their matches. If they, with that skill mentality from each player, if they start to s develop and show that from 11, 12, 13, then they're most likely to get picked up. After 15, no clubs look at them really. Mm. They start to get released at 16, so why would a club take them on? Yeah. So if they're starting 17, 18, and I can think, I can speak for a lot of the players who are playing in the Bengal Dragons, they probably didn't start playing properly until they're 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. although we want, it's a great, fantastic opportunity. We want to see the youngsters coming up, but most importantly, the parental support, and that's that. That covers then the financial and the transport barrier, which is the other two barriers that um, we know all, we all know. Of. So, in your opinion, you have the talent in Wales. Yeah, I think I I, I believe so. Yeah. You're just lacking the support. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think just to touch up on what uh, Mizan has just said. I think it's pivotal that uh, uh, parental support. Um, it's the grassroots level is where they, <coughs> where they should be at. From at the age of four or four to five, yeah. that's when they should be um, taken to these grassroots level clubs mm. and introduced to cl clubs. And parents, I know it's difficult for us sometimes, but it's the commitment from parents will will go a long way yeah. to establishing uh, a future. Uh, you know, a uh, Premiership player or, uh, you know, some, mm. something to a higher level. All right, f uh, just go moving on again from what Mizan said regarding the, the, the ability levels within the Asian community is there. Um, the parental support is an issue. Mm. You guys are, the next step is to move into the Welsh Football League, Sunday League, whatever it may be, the mainstream league of, of, of a sort. So what are you guys going to be doing at Bengals in terms of thinking with the future in mind? Uh, I'm surely you've got to start thinking about maybe setting up an academy of some type for you for the kids that yeah so basically we we want we want to copy we want to use the same structure that you've used i mean you started sporting bengal with just a senior team mm -hmm. and then now you've got your tower hamlets youth league mm -hmm. where you've got your team uh, fc osmania mm -hmm. under 14 level we want to have a bengal dragons team that will be available at all ages for mm -hmm. everyone to be playing so so if you have a it doesn't necessarily just have to be for bengalis but if you see if if you have if Bengali parents see other Bengali parents mm. taking their ki taking their kids to their football matches. We think that will help spur them on, help them uh, believe that there's a chance there. So how are you going to change the mindset? Parents having them there, bringing their kids to training. How you, w what's how well, are you going to combat the that? Way, well the way we started it was we w we want to give them role models to aspire to. Mm -hmm. If you have if you have because one of the problems right now, uh, on top of the fact that there's not much parental support, is you don't really see any Asian <coughs> football players playing at, at the highest level mm -hmm. in in any British football. So if we if we can try and get our team to say one of the higher d divisions in Welsh football, we would we would be ha we they would be able to show that there are that it's cap that you are capable of get of reaching high levels and then hopefully that would change the mindset of parents. Okay. Um sorry, you want to say yeah, I'm just going to add something as what Ms. actually uh, just said. It's 
It is very, uh, that especially being an Asian uh, mm. background also, and especially our, our us Bangladeshis, uh, yes, most of our parents are busy working, as you said. And a lot of, uh, when you get to the age, bo uh, at the moment our boys are playing, uh, 40, 15, 17, 18. Some of them are in education or mm -hmm. some of them are already helping their parents in their, yeah. uh, in their respective businesses. I was well one way, I mean, at that time, my, my boy actually pays for uh, Bengal Dragons, but he's about, and he's, well, just going to be 18 next month. Now, I couldn't able to, I know Anabai took his boys uh, very, uh, all every day, and sometimes I used to feel sorry for my, but I was lucky, my neighbor, was the coach of my boys. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, our local Welsh uh, local man. So because he was a neighbor, he was a coach, uh, Marlborough Sports. They have from the under seven, I think they had. Mm. Uh, I think your boys played for them yeah, as well. Under indeed. seven till the youth. Mm. And Javid still, I think, is still registered with them. But, uh, but I was very lucky. Now, if it wasn't for, uh, for those two coaches, Javid would be playing uh, now. And also, what he does actually, a lot of we support him is as I was just talking to Mizan just a few minutes ago, that obviously supporting our, our boys, our community, keep him off the streets, mm -hmm. also keep him fit, because if you look at a lot of way, it, it it does it does you know feedbacks to how how the boys are if they are from s year seven, from six, seven, eight, nine, ten that could if anything if they don't succeed <coughs> in mm -hmm. in the field they're in at least they'll be fit. Mm. And <laughs> look at us, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all fit one, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it will keep them fit. Mm. And so it's, it <coughs> is in our own interest, mm. uh, okay, to, to support yeah. just uh, our boys. Just, and just to touch up on what you just, uh, um, just mentioned there, Akul Bhai. Uh, before our, pa our parents, and um, I'm looking at um, my peer group, a lot of people were working unsociable hours. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for them to get up early in the morning, say seven, eight o'clock in the morning, to be able to um, take their kids. Because the, the trainings are normally, as you all know, they start early in the morning. The clubs, they start very early in the morning. And the games are usually in the mornings as well. So the parents, it used normally it was, the, it was the dad whose responsibility it was to, to take the boys to the football. And uh, the mothers uh, were either did not drive or were not able to do that. But now I think we're getting to a stage by where now we've, we're going to the, the next generation whereby the, both parents are able to, um, to help okay. in that respect. And I think the, the, uh, that will help the, you know, the, the future up-and-coming youngsters. All right, brilliant. Well, that, that's been insightful. Thanks <coughs> for Mizan's input. I think when we come back, we'll talk more about FC Bengals and what you're going to do. I want to talk more to, obviously, Akmal as well. He's, uh, for those that don't know, he did have trials with the Bangladesh under-19s team. Um, we'll learn more about his uh, run that he did last week or yesterday I think it was yes as well yes so yeah uh, I want to talk about that as well so guys let's go for a quick break uh, we'll see you in two minutes <laughs>